Hello, my name is Xin Kang. I'm a graduate student in civil engineering, Missouri University of Science and Technology. And welcome to our geotechnical soils lab. Now, I will be introduce you the procedure of performing consolidated triaxial compression test. Before we start the test, we need some equipment. First, we need the triaxial compression chamber, which is here. As you can see, it has top gap, the fill, and the base. And we also need this trimming frame to trim the sample. Our sample today is going to be 1.4 inch in diameter and 2.8 inch in height. And we also need the knife to trim the specimen. After we trim the specimen, we need this mold. This mold can bring us the exactly size 1.4 by 2.8 inch size specimen. And uh, we also need this membrane expander. This can help us put the membrane around this specimen. Also, we need a syringe to clean the pipe, clean the tube of the triaxial chamber. And we need a membrane. This is 1.4 inch diameter membrane. And the two pieces of power stone. And also two builder paper. Also, we, we, we might need a water tank like this to put water and put the <coughs> membrane, soaked membrane in, in, the, in the tank for like 16 hours before we use the membrane. Okay, to perform the test, we also need a water boiler like this, we can control the temperature so that we can boil the water, boil the porous stone in this water mm, bowl. And uh, after we boil the porous stone in this tank, we can put it in this machine. It's called ultrasonic cleaner. We can put the porous stone inside this machine, and uh, this machine will clean the trapped air inside the power stove. And after we clean the power stove, we can put it into this vacuum container. You see, there's many different sizes power stove inside the vacuum container. It's to hold the vacuum so that the power stove is in perfect condition. Okay. So as you can see, we have put the specimen, the prior stove inside the water tank, and uh, because of the heating, the water is boiling now. Yeah, after about uh, 10 minutes, we can stop the boiler and uh, let our prior stove power still stays um, for a while until it cools down. Now the water cools down. We can take the power still out of the specimen. Don't use your fingers because the water still might be hot. Yeah, we can put the power stove in this pan and let it cool for a while. So make sure we can touch the power stove by our hand. Two power stoves are cooled cool down. Let's put it into the ultrasonic cleaner. You can use your hand. Transfer this to power stove into the ultrasonic cleaner and you put the cap 
on and uh, push this button here it will start ultrasonic clean the power so for 330 seconds after 330 seconds it will automatically stop okay so after we clean the power stove, we can take it out and store it in our vacuum container. Let's transfer this two power stove in our vacuum container. You release the vacuum. You open here. So there's no vacuum inside the vacuum container. And then take off the cap. And put the two power stove inside the water, and put the cap on. Make sure there is no leakage between the cap and the tank. Okay. So put back this bolt here. Put back this, and then turn this to the vacuum source. So the vacuum will hold the cap tightly now. Now, let's put the membrane inside this water tank. We have to soak our membrane for at least 16 hours in the distilled water before we start our test. And then, let's look at our specimen. Uh, it is a specimen. It is a remote, remoted specimen from standard Proctor test. As you can see, it has some large gravels trapped inside the specimen, and uh, it's a very large size compared to our triaxial um, test specimen. So we have to trim it. Okay, let's start trim the specimen. First, let's put the specimen in this pan so we don't spill the soil out to our floor and uh, dirty our table. And uh, we cut from the outside of the specimen, we cut from mm, like one by one and uh, trim it to a, down to a small size. While you, while you cut it, you turn the specimen round, like and always keep it your round shape. We only need the center of this specimen. Okay, now the specimen is trimmed down, like as you can see, it's much smaller than the original size. And uh, now we have to put this specimen underneath the frame. And uh, we change to this longer knife. Kind of smooth the surface of the specimen, like I'm doing this. You cut from top to bottom, and uh, you turn this side so the specimen can turn it around like you're smoothing the specimen. Okay, now let's look at the specimen. It's right 1.4 inch diameter. However, the height is larger than 2.8 inch. 
So we have to take off the sesame from the tray and uh, put into this mold and get the 2.8 inch height. Okay, so it's in perfect size. So what does it look like? Isn't like a hot dog? Yeah, but it, we cannot eat it, right? Let's cut the, use this knife, cut the top and bottom, so it's in 2.8 eight inch. Be careful, don't destroy the sesame. So you have to cut from the end of the mold and uh, from bottom to top like this. Yeah, you cut it by this side and then turn it a little bit and uh, cut it and then turn it around and cut it and uh, then smooth the surface like this. Use it to smooth the surface to make it like a level in horizontal direction. Okay, this side now is in perfect shape like you see here. And then we change to this side. Also from bottom to top like like this, and then turn it around, cut it again, and then turn it around, cut it, cut it, cut it, like trimming a pencil, right? Yeah, it's like a pencil, you can write it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, this side we also have to smooth the surface. Yeah, sometimes you will see some gravels trapped right at the surface of the specimen. So we have to take off the base gravel and do some costume work. like. We put some like you see here the hole like we have because we take off the gravel so we have to put back some soil to take uh, take up this hole and like put some soil here and then also some soil here and then use the knife to compact it and then smooth the surface. Also check this side. Okay, so now the specimen is right inside this mold. And uh, take off the mold. Let's look at this specimen. Dun 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 dun. It's right 1.4 by 2.8 inch. Okay, so we have to measure the weight, measure the height, and. Uh, Record this data before we start our test. So, to measure the size of the specimen, we need this dial caliper. And uh, we have to measure the top and also the bottom and get the average value of this specimen and then measure the height of the specimen and then turn around, measure it again and get the average value 